mode. Good morning. Welcome to the webinar uh, with the team uh, Drill Well in Simulator, team training on your own well and field. Together uh, with me, uh, my name is uh, Morten Svensson. I'm the lead product manager in e-drilling. Together with me, I have uh, Just Sverre Vessel, uh, operational manager in Mersk Training. Good morning. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, the need for training. Um, obviously, the industry are still in the need for training. Um, and for today's top market is to improve the efficiency to make sure that the dollar you spend is the dollar you receive as well. Um, the industry is, um, is still in a need for the increased competence. The wells are getting more and more difficult and more challenging to drill. Um, and the other f fact about the um, training is that um, you can train on things that you're not working on the well, so it doesn't have a cost on the well and the performance. And you can challenge the teams with things that you hope you'll never see uh, working offshore, but you hope that also that they un actually do know if something happens. So um, it will improve the safety. Um, with a team training, we're looking at the, a, um, uh, the team problem solving skills. How are the team working together? How are they uh, distributing the, um, the workload between them in the critical situations? And a few other bits and bats which improves the team performance as such. Um, the training will also focus on the optimized solutions. Um, very often we have a tendency to be looking at the good enough solutions, but uh, we'd like to see that an optimized solutions is being used. And uh, last but not least, um, we're going to allow the right critical questions to be asked because there is a lot of experience, there's a lot of know-how in the industry and uh, bringing that to the table helps to improve the overall both safety, efficiency and in the end the outcome of the, the project. So um, our vision uh, is to achieve uh, zero incidents in drilling and well operations. Uh, our goal is to drill the perfect well and to be able to do that, do it first in a secure envi environment in a simulator. Um, we, uh, we, uh, our goal is to give more realistic training environment and scenarios and to train crews in teams, in departments, and improve operational in interaction. And uh, we believe that we can set new training standards and improve the uh, safety and performance. So when it comes to uh, drill well in simulator, uh, we are kind of splitting that into two parts. We have the advanced training and we also have part of the well engineering. If we look at the advanced training, uh, by having a realistic dynamic wells uh, or a realistic dynamic models, uh, we are building the real wells in the simulator with all the dynamic effects um, that uh, is part of the physics. And that allows us to also do, uh, for example, advanced well control. Uh, uh, training uh, and we are, have a very high focus on advanced methods like managed pressure drilling, under balance drilling, HBHD, extended reach drilling and so on. When it comes to uh, the well engineering part uh, we see that in a, in a good uh, downhole simulator it, you can test uh, technical limits of the well and by having a simulator environment with a downhole visualization, you can also visualize and explore the risks of the well. And that will also give a very good collaboration platform between the different parts of the, uh, engineer, the engineering parts in the, both in planning phase, but also training and when you come to operation as well. 
And we see that testing new drilling concepts in a very in a safe environment. For example, if you if you have a new managed pressure drilling system, you can plug it into the simulator and test it, and, and not only kind of the, the the concept, but also the control system and the procedures developed around it. Um, the key focus on operational integration is um, is obviously the well specifics, um, the, cha the well specific challenges to understand what they actually are. Um, one of the things that that involves is also the, the managing the risks and the associated risks by actually drilling it. Um, we have, when we build, start drilling a well, uh, the risks are usually listed and uh, they're being highlighted, but they're not necessarily lived throughout it actively, even though they ought to be. Um, but that's one of the things we're trying to move to actually start understanding the risks and start living with the risks, making sure that they are actually being coped with before they encounter. Um, testing and verification of the operational procedures, and that ties a bit back to what Morton said here in the previous slide. Um, very often we find ourselves uh, testing the new procedures that the, the oil companies or the drilling contractor will be using. And um, within one particular field in Norway, they had a huge challenge because they they took a kick. Um, and when they killed the well and they opened up the BUP afterwards, uh, they lost it. And that's a fairly common phrase, actually. After a lot of investigations, they realized uh, they had a few challenges. One was the high mud weight. Um, the second one was the 60 degree sail angle. And um, what happened when they started to, to uh, circulate with the drillers method was that um, the, the uh, high mud weight was flowing on the high side of the wall. Um, but they've been sitting there idle for quite some time. And due to the high mud weights itself, a lot of the bar barite, which was there originally, has fallen out of the suspension and was on the low side. And when they were doing the drillers method, they didn't get it into suspension. Um, later down the road, um, the same operator came in and wanted to test this thesis of changing the well control procedures. So instead of doing a dynamic, or sorry, a uh, drillless well control method, they changed it a bit. And we're still using the drillless well control method as a fundamental principle. But instead of obtaining the results from the gauges on the surface, they looked at the PWD sub, which gives them a lot better interaction and understanding of what was happening down the hole. And um, they tested out that procedure a couple of times in order to make it viable. And um, then they took it out offshore. And when they did try it out offshore afterwards, it worked perfectly. And it didn't lose the well. The uh, high mud weights that was seen um, with the previous kick, that was nowhere to be found now. So they smoothed out the, um, the um, equivalent mud weight throughout the well bore. And that was just by changing the procedures. And we could test things like that using a full-scale dynamic drilling simulator. Um, and that also leads into the technical competences, enhancing the technical competences, understanding the, the boundaries and where you can actually push and where you're going to have to hold back. Um, and with the team, team communication part is an integrated part of that, because we all know that without the proper communication throughout the team, you will have a hard time dealing with critical situations. Um, when we conduct the training on a simulator, um, we usually let them play out the case as realistic as it would be in the offshore without interaction from, from the instructor. Once the case has been solved, um, or at least we come into a point where we, where we can start to draw some conclusions, uh, we'll have a bit of a debriefing session on evaluation. And the debriefing is usually where the instructor tells them all right, how did we do it? Um, how did we go? Uh, could we have done something else? What could we have done? And then there's a small evaluation based on that, and that's going to be a team evaluation bet between the crew which is there. 
And lastly, but um, not least, is the lessons learned. Uh, we have a high focus on grasping the lessons learned in the simulator because we have seen that that has had a huge operational impact once they're going offshore. So that's been a, a true asset for the for the team score walking away with a with a higher competencies. So uh, I, we will now try to uh, play off a, a, a short film that actually Start Oil uh, made uh, around this s simulator and and the training they are using uh, our services for. So um, <clears throat> this, is, this is a video that Startall made themselves uh, and you, you, you can uh, find it on YouTube if you want to see it again. So who is this drilling well and simulator for? Uh, and uh, our, our, our opinion is that it's for all old companies that is uh, going to drill uh, obviously for complex wells where you have some uh, challenges that you need to pre prepare for uh, and also kind of not only preparing for detecting them but also handling them if, if, if there's something happening. But it's also obvious to have it in wells in, in an area where uh, you, you are drilling into uh, a new formation or a new uh, field uh, where there are uh, some uncertainties uh, and where you have uh, 
which is new for your team and, and your crew. But we also think it's uh, very good for so-called straightforward wells, uh, where you actually are just doing whatever you are used to do and you don't have any expectations of anything happening. But as we know, all wells are potential disasters. And you you re, you will uh, have a non-productive time and uh, things happening in all kinds of well, uh, and kind of being prepared for what can happen and maybe avoid them uh, would be very beneficial. Um, so and we think it, we are adding value uh, and um, when we're maintaining a proactive attitude during the operations. Also, by kind of adding, if you go to the next level and, and add the uh, real-time simulation and decision system uh, to, to actually kind of um, be even more secure uh, from that. So a bit on how we plan these training course. And just kind of start a bit with what we need of information. And, and that is quite complex but also quite easy because since we are we are using our physical models in the simulators which uh, which uh, are giving you a realistic well we need to feed these models with uh, with with the, with the data that we know or the data that you know from the well that you're going to drill so that means uh, properties of the formation when it comes to hardness porosity permeability uh, temperature profile pore pressure and frac pressure, the BHA that you are going to use, uh, drilling fluids with all the specs of them, to, and also the, the lengths and IDs of all your flow lines to be able to have uh, realistic uh, surface pressures uh, together with the downhole pressures. So, so it's, it's, it's not very com uh, complex, but again, we see that it's important to, to have a realistic simulation. So, and how we actually do create the scenarios for the well specific simulation is that we build up the well with all the uh, properties that we know about the well that you have. And by kind of uh, the known risks or challenges that you see in your well is something that we also add into the simulator. So if there is some uncertainty of the pore pressure, for example, we, we will feed the simulator with that uncertainty. So, so you will actually have a scenario where you can drill into your formation where you think you have uh, a, a very lo low pore pressure, but you, you actually have a very high pore pressure, for example. Uh, and that goes for all different scenarios that you have. But it could also be uh, on procedures on uh, contingency procedures or procedures regarding your equipment. So we, we all, of course, you can train, when you are doing your real well in the simulator, you can also have events like pump failures or stuff. So you need to kind of think about everything at once. Um, so how do we interact with the client when we're building the training cases? Um, I didn't know it when we first started up, but I learned an expression from, from our sales department. It's called the, the client's pain and gain. And um, even though we didn't have a wording for it, that was actually what we did. We had to identify the pain of the client. Where were the shoe pinching? Um, what areas could, could we improve? And what areas should we keep a focus on? Um, and that usually means that we're going to have to sit down with the client and uh, talk openly about the well and the risks and the associated risks with it and um, elaborate on the crews who could be drilling it where are the weaknesses where are the strengths are there any identified weaknesses we they particularly need to challenge uh, or improve um, so that's the the client's pain and the client's gain is where we sit down and we see through the problems and the the pains uh, in order to see how we can actually make sure that they, they are gaining the most out of the out of the days and the time they spend uh, on the training and there's no need for us if to train on tripping if that crew and that rig and that field is superstars on tripping uh, however if they have seen some risks associated with it it could, might be worthwhile making sure that they they do have a good tripping practice 
So um, that's a bit of the pain and the gain of the client. And um, how many days do they train? Um, generally speaking, um, we like to have as a minimum one crew for one day. Um, but again, it adds on to the, or the complexity of the well and the, the situation here that you're about to do uh, might add on to that. So we have had uh, simulations where the simulation part was three, three days uh, max and uh, added with a bit of a theory. Um, but we can also set, we can go down to one day if that's needed. So a bit about our training experience. So um, we have uh, been training uh, more than 3,000 participants in the team training sessions that we have had. And in this, uh, during this training or preparing for all these uh, sessions, we have prepared more than 100 very specific training scenarios. Uh, and as you see, it's all different kinds of training. It's uh, managed pressure drilling, high pressure, high temperature, extended ridge drilling, deep water wells. We have been doing a lot of drilling and tripping operations with the dynamic search, search and swap effects, multi-fluid operations. In general, we, we have been through most of the different uh, technologies. And um, so, so, so we have real rather experienced in the training field. So we, we, um, we would like to go through briefly uh, two different uh, examples of what we have done. Uh, and uh, just uh, you will take us through uh, those. Yes, <clears throat> we um, trade the um the uh, crew for Transocean Arctic, they're going to drill the uh, Wintershaldi and the HPHT IMSA well. Um, one of the issues with IMSA was that it was situated in the area where the where the um, pressures in the reservoir was very uncertain. Um, the overburden pressure varied from 400 bars to 50 bars in the closed virginity of it. And um, the offset wells, they were uh, having a lot of different um, pressures related uh, down the wall. Um, so um, Winters all had to plan and train for more or less everything. Um, so their focus was a lot of kick detection, how do we actually deal with it if, if things doesn't happen the way we think they are. Um, what should be the initial response to any situation and so on and so on. Um, so, um, and to in all fairness, Transocean Arctic did a fantastic job because when they actually did take the kick, when they got into the reservoirs, they did all the th right things at the right time. And uh, we were so fortunate that we were actually being able to see it while they were taking the kick. Um, and it, um, it's clear to see that the, the things that have been the discussion during the training was really the things that we're doing when they actually were in the same situation. The um, next example is the uh, Total and the Solaris well. Uh, the Solaris well is the first 20k well ever drilled. It's uh, got a downhole pressure on the 1300 bar. Um, it's going to be the deepest well in the north or in the Norwegian Continental Shelf. It's planned down to 6,387 meters. And it also will be the hottest one on the Norwegian Continental Shelf. Um, and the rig is being equipped with a 20k BOP, and, um, or sorry, a 20k share, um, share BOP and pipe run. And uh, they have a 15k on top of it. And that means that they're going to have to be looking into the well control procedure quite heavily in order to make sure that they actually understand the thresholds in the pressures if something should happen and if they're going to have to utilize the 20k stack. Um, and that's going to be a high, high focus uh, with Total. Uh, so we're looking forward to see that. Um, so I think that was more or less the two examples in a quick draft. I'm going to have to redo it.
So now we have gone through all our slides. In the webinar uh, window, uh, in the program, there is a field where you can ask questions. And we have time for a couple of questions, if you have any. And we have got one question about if you have a link for that video. And uh, I've added a link to it in the chat box. So you should all be able to see that video of the, the Start All uh, Simulator video uh, on your own later on. So if you have any questions, please write them in, type them in, and we will answer them uh, as good as we can. Yeah. So, who is uh, what's the question? Yeah, it's uh, who is offering these training uh, classes? Is it? Uh, uh, and that's a good question because uh, Mersk Training and eDrilling is our partners. So both eDrilling and Mersk Training is offering training classes. Uh, or uh, so. So there is kind of. Doesn't you can con take contact with anybody who 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 you want to, and we will arrange training scenarios and we work really tight together on the development of the scenarios. But we we each willing to see that the instructors that Mersk training has is very very good in in the instructing part uh, of this training. Yeah, and um, it also t relates a little bit to what kind of level of training you're li looking for. And um, well, this kind of level of training is is literally not that many that are able to 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 lift it. Um, but I think that the industry, the training industry, will move forward in that respect as well because they do see the need and they do see the um, the shortcomings. Uh, so we need to make sure that we are raising the bar quite a lot. So yeah, another question. Uh, yeah, what? What kind of simulator are you talking about? Uh, yeah, good question. So, um, what we have been talking about is the concept about the, the, the uh, drill well in simulator. And the e-drilling has the, what we call the well sim, which is the downhole simulator engine that we use in different applications. Uh, both in engineering uh, training simulator, but we can also connect it to Topside simulators, and we are working uh, uh, together with a company called Oiltec that has uh, a high drill topside drill floor simulator, which we have connected to, uh, and uh, so so it's completely integrated as a, a one product. But we could also, if we have any customers that want to uh, have the Wellsim donor part connected to another topside simulator, that is also possible. Yeah, and we have a question more. Uh, what is the origin of the downhole model algor algorithms and how have they been tested? That's also a very good question. The origin of the models that we use are from Sinta Petroleum Research. Uh, so we, we have uh, been uh, working together with Sinta for years. And they have developed uh, uh, these models, uh, hydraulic models, uh, hydraulic uh, connected to a temperature model and a torque and drag model. Uh, so that is the origin and uh, the testing. Yeah, um, uh, e-drilling. The, the the concept from e-drilling is actually running the this this model in real time in in what we call the well ahead system, where we do advanced monitoring of the well. So we have been running these systems against uh, real-time data have, and have been benchmarking it against the measurements in the well uh, for years. But we have also, when we started the training simulator project, we were doing a lot of benchmarking against other models as well to make, and also the real-time measurements, of course, to make sure that we were uh, doing the calculations correctly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and one uh, other question. 
what is the return of investments uh, in, in today's market uh, uh, when they cost uh, with cost focus? I'm going to answer yeah. that one. Um, the return of investment, obviously, training is an investment, um, but also we do have a lot of stories where the where the um, where the training part has gained quite a lot, um, both from the money and time wise. Um, one of the one of the latest one we have uh, been doing is the a deep water drilling campaign, and um, what they were for or what they realised when they actually came to the rig was that um, the um, the fingerprinting of the of the um, of the cooling effect in the riser uh, when we're talking about actually down at the bottom of the ocean it was minus degrees Celsius it was all of a sudden became quite clear for them and. Uh, so after the 15 minute um, fingerprint, they were all hop- happy about it because they did see how th- this was evolving exactly the same as we were able to replicate in the simulator. And if they haven't been satisfied with it, they've been forced to fingerprint that for the three hours it would take. So that's just one example. Um, we have another example, uh, even further down south, where, um, where they took a kick and um, the magnitude and the intensity of the kick was so severe that uh, they have the hard time getting out of it and uh, the drilling superintendent said that if it hasn't been for the training he was really doubtful that they actually would have managed to save that in the first place and uh, that would have been something called weeks and weeks and months and months if that was the case. So we have another question. Um, can the model simulate gas solution in oil-based mud? If so, uh, how is breakout modeled? So yeah, uh, when we are uh, defining the fluids that we use in the simulator, we are defining if it's an oil-based mud or a water-based mud or whatever. And in our, when we have an oil-based mud, then you do a take a gas influx that will go into solution of the fluid, and it will break out. Uh, but the details about how it's modeled, um, I need to check that, and uh, I can get back to you about that. Uh, I'll send you an email a, a bit more on the details. I, I need to check that internally, and how much I can say about it. Okay. So I think we have answered all the questions and we are out of time. So if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us and uh, we will uh, 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 help you with your questions. So thank you for uh, the time spending with us and also thank you Just for uh, supporting me in this webinar. You're welcome.